All right, I'm going to talk to you today about resurrection and not rapture. All right, the word rapture is not in your King James Bible. The word resurrection is. Very important distinction there. And of course, a lot of the post tribbers will say, see, there's no word, where does it say pre trib rapture in the King James Bible? They say, uh, well, it doesn't say that. And they say, oh, see, that's why your system is wrong. And we that believe in the post trib rapture are right. Um, post trib rapture is not in the Bible either. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I'm going to show you about the resurrection. I'm going to do a little bit of a word study on this thing today. Uh, we're not going to go every, over every single reference to resurrection in the King James Bible, but it is an interesting study to be sure. Let's start out in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Turn in your King James Bible. Print, Bible. You can get them in a dollar store. Don't tell me you can't afford one. My, if you're in a country that you can't get one, okay, I, I you know, give a little bit of grace for you there. If you just newly heard about this or whatever else, well, you know, there's, you know, Bibles available online and whatever else, but you need to print one, really. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 through 19. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This book, the whole book is written uh, to you, but it's not written for you. Okay, every single part of this. Obviously, nobody's going to go back to the Old Testament and say, Levitical priesthood, we got to start sacrificing animals. No, that changed. All right, just a basic understanding. Old Testament, New Testament, things changed. All right, dispensational teaching is what 2 Timothy 2.15 is all about. And it's so funny, it cracks me up, these non-dispensational Baptists especially, and they'll say, rightly dividing the word of truth just means accurately handling. They'll do that. It just means that you're just rightly divide. You're just supposed to go and accurately handle Funny because that's what the NIV says. And a lot of these other new versions, they'll say accurately handling. The King James Bible is the only one that says study. You know, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're to divide this book right here. Unless you believe in the new versions or you use a King James Bible to deceive people and then you, you know, actually, you know, correct it with the new version readings. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Post-tribism is exactly that. It is a vain and profane babbling, and it increases unto more ungodliness. All of a sudden, you start to say, I've got to become a King, KGV prepper, or some kind of a, i got to prepare to go through the, t you know, hmm, yeah. Go dig your little survival bunker and fill it with MREs and whatever else. Verse 17, And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred, ready, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Get that one. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You're a Christian? Turn from sin. Oh, oh, that's that's some kind of lordship salvation or something. No, lordship salvation is saying that you have to turn from sin before you get saved. That's lordship salvation. Okay, big difference there. When you get saved, you do depart from iniquity. The Lord changes your life. But notice that. Verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. It already happened in the past. Okay, what are those people? Preterists. Okay, uh, these people that are amillennial and things like this, they'll say, well, the, all the events of Revelation took place in the first century. There is nothing there, really, and we just kind of just happily go on through the future with no end in sight or aim or goal or anything. We just kind of just through the future. <laughs> Crazy nuts. But you'll see this thing of cultic people will mess with the resurrection every single time. Because the resurrection is the completion of your salvation if you're saved. All right. Um, the Lord, when He saves you, He quickens your spirit. You're dead in trespasses and sins. You're like a, a remote control that has no batteries in it. All right. The Holy Spirit moves into your life, and now your spirit is quickened. It's awakened, and you can start to understand this book, and things start to make sense to you. And things that you used to do, now you realize, hey, that's sin. I should stop doing that. The Lord will convict you. All right. Your soul is redeemed, but your body of flesh is still corruptible. 
And the final redemption there, the redemption of the purchased possession is when your body is changed. That's the resurrection. Okay? There's a lot of dead saints out there right now that are buried and in the ground, and their bodies don't look very nice. I believe the soul and the spirit are with the Lord in heaven, but their body is not in so good a shape. Okay? The Lord doesn't, you know, they're not going to say, Lord, could you please get my body up here? I, it's really rotted bad, but it's okay. I'd like to have, no. They're looking for a new body. All right? An incorruptible body. That is the resurrection. And you say, well, but, but we're, I'm living and I'm in decent shape and whatever. And, uh, you know, how's that work for me? Do I need to be resurrected? Yes, you do too. Because you're walking around in a corpse, okay, that's living and breathing, I'll say. <laughs> but uh, it's corruptible. Every day that you live is one step closer to death. You don't get healthier as time goes by in terms of you just get better and better and better and then you don't die or something. All of us die. Okay? Understand that. So the dead in Christ need to be resurrected, but so do we, the living in Christ. Important thing to remember. Matthew chapter 22. Go to Matthew chapter 22. Verse 23. I'll show you an interesting thing here. Matthew chapter 22. Verse 23, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. And they try to trip him up, okay, try to, try to mess with him. But the Sadducees don't believe in a resurrection. Hmm. Um, just going to do a little spoiler here. The post-tribbers don't believe in a resurrection either. You see, they'll say, Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. Those are the four passages that they will quote most to prove that Christians go into the Great Tribulation, they'll say. Um, but here's the problem. There's no resurrection mentioned in any of those four places. No dead saints are coming up. It's not there. You say, well, it's, it's not revealed till later on. It's, you know, Jesus didn't talk about it, but it's later on revealed to Paul. Uh, wouldn't that make you dispensational, first of all? But let's not get, you know... I don't want to go too far over their heads, post rivers. Um, it would be dispensational, but forget that for a minute. Oh, it's, it, it's not mentioned by Jesus. Um, well, haven't you read the book of John? Chapter 11, where he's talking about Lazarus. We're going to go there in a little bit. And um, he talks about dead and living saints coming up. So yes, Jesus did talk about it. It's not that it was later revealed to Paul or whatever else. And you just compare 1 Thess First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 4. 15 verses 51 through 58 with Matthew 24, and it all works out. No, it doesn't. You compare the two passages, actually, and you see it's two completely different events. All right? You have nothing, you, no leg to stand on if you're a post river. None. But look at something interesting here. If you jump down there in Matthew chapter 22, we read verse 23, but go down there to verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. In the resurrection. Okay? Yes, Jesus is saying there is a resurrection, and they are as the angels of God in heaven. And there's a great number of angels, over 100 million angels, mentioned in Revelation chapter 5, right after the 24 elders that are redeemed to God by the blood of the Lamb out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. Hmm, Christians in heaven before the Antichrist shows up in Revelation chapter 6. Well, you can't prove a preacher rapture. There's not one single verse that you... I can talk about the resurrection. Okay? Now you can say the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. That's also correct. We'll be caught up together with them in the cloud. That's correct. But I would say, looking at this thing, studying this all these years, I think the best term... Not rapture, definitely not, not in the Bible, just kick it out of there. Resurrection. Because you see, that's the real important one. Let's continue. Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20, verses 34 through 38. 
And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Hmm. Jesus does talk about it. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he calleth the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. So even there in Luke chapter 20, it does, Jesus actually does talk about the resurrection of the dead and living. So don't say, well, in, in the Gospels, Jesus really didn't talk about that resurrection you know, angle to it there. Because, I mean, you read Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and uh, Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 21. It doesn't say anything about dead people coming up, dead saints being resurrected. It's not there. You say about one taken, one left. Okay, let's get back to Luke chapter 17. I'll show you that real quick. While we're here, Luke chapter 17, um, verse 30, we'll start there. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the, uh, the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. And you'll see that in these passages, Mark, or excuse me, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. You'll see this thing there, okay? But here's the point. Where's anybody dead in that passage? They're not. It's talking about living people. They're taken. You say, but that's the rapture. That's the rapture. It's, it's got to be there. It just doesn't say the dead coming up. Keep reading. Verse 37, And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? This one's taken. That one's taken. That one's taken. And they say, Where? Where are they taken, in other words? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. That's not the resurrection. It's not there. The eagles are gathered together back in Revelation 19, the battle of Armageddon. So when they're fleeing, they're being taken, they're leaving there. The Holy Spirit is saying, hey, run. It's time to get out of there. That's the taken in these passages. There is no resurrection of dead saints at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Then how did the dead saints get up there before the Antichrist is re revealed? In the resurrection, they are neither they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. And the Lord says it again in Luke chapter 20. And those dead saints are there in heaven in Revelation 5. Antichrist is unleashed in Revelation 6. How did they get there? Because the resurrection happens before the time of Jacob's trouble. And the resurrection has multiple parts too. Need to say that. We'll see about that here in a little bit. Because that's another one that the postseason will try to use. But let's go to John chapter 5. I'll tell you right now, this is a very, very, very important thing. If you are newly saved and you're hearing this post-trib stuff, you are dealing with some hardcore deception. You really are. They're trying to destroy your faith. They're trying to overthrow your faith. John chapter 5, verses 17 through 30. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Hmm. See, they understood when Jesus said, God's my Father, they understood that He was saying that He is God. They understood that. Okay? Just modern Trinitarians don't get it. Verse 19, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He seeth the Father do. For what th uh, things soever He doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Why? They're the same being. The Father is the soul, the Son is the body, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Very simple. Verse 20, For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. 
For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. The Father is raising people up and quickening them, and so the Son does too. They're the same being. Verse 22, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. The two different gods, though. Trinitarians. Two different persons. Yeah, I don't think so. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Yeah, let's continue here. Verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Well, Jesus, you know, he didn't really talk much about the resurrection. It was just not mentioned until later when Paul, it's right here. It's right there. Verse 26, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. <laughs> See the parallels here? Jesus just, the Father has life in himself, I have life in myself. All right? Um, verse 27, And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his Voice. Jesus never mentioned the resurrection. Uh, yes, he did. And shall come forth they that have done good under the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil under the resurrection of damnation. Jesus never mentioned the resurrection. It just kind of happened later on. You just don't know your Bible, these people that say that stuff. Verse 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, Jesus didn't mention the rapture, or the uh, resurrection, rather. Uh, yes, he did. Okay. Um, John chapter 11. John chapter 11, verse 21 through 29. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And here it gets really exciting. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. Calls his sheep by name and leads them out. John chapter 10. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. If you're a post tribute you're not going to understand any of that stuff because this is a spiritual book. And the, th the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness to him. You say, oh, that's ridiculous. You can't make a rapture, you know, an issue, pre-trib rapture, you know, argument there or whatever else. Uh, well, I can make a resurrection argument. And uh, if you're saved, you'll get that. It's a great blessing. Um, I don't. I, I don't believe. You know, we're going to be resurrected. You know, and before the time of Jacob's trouble. And I, I, I'm looking for Matthew 24 and everything. Okay, then you're denying Jesus Christ. Jesus is the resurrection. He didn't say I believe in the resurrection. He said I am the resurrection. And isn't it weird that post tribbers will say Jesus never mentioned it? And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. It's one of his titles, essentially. But they, they just, they, I, I don't see it in the Gospels and think. Acts chapter 4. 
Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through uh, 2. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Hmm. Did you know that there's a lot of post-tribbers out there that get grieved because of people like me that preach the resurrection from the dead? Mm -hmm. It's uh, kind of sad, you see. Had to put that in there. <laughs> um, there's a lot of religious hypocrites out there, like the ancient Sadducees. They don't believe in the resurrection. They believe that they're going to have to endure to the end. They believe that they're going to see the Antichrist and get to prove how great a Christians they are. And we're going to go through, we're going to go through intense suffering, but God's going to be there as we're soul winning and continuing to go, go attend our local Baptist church. We're going to go through it, but we're, you know, we're going to be strong. I'm just going to continue preaching. <laughs> they will stay, still stay in their Baptist churches, but they're going to be worshiping the Antichrist. These people that are these church building people, the post trib church building people, they're absolutely right in their convictions. They are going to go through that time period that's coming, and they will still stay in their churches, but they'll be worshiping their true Christ, the Antichrist. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 18. Then certain philosophers hmm, of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, other some he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods. Interesting, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Uh, did you know that pagan philosophers believe that there's more than one God? They'll say that there's a God the Father. That's truth. But then they'll say God the Spirit, God the Son. And all Paul's doing is saying, I, I'm just preaching Jesus. In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You see? The philosophers, the lost pagan philosophers... They're the ones that come up with the Trinity stuff. And that's exactly what the Catholic Catechism says. Again, I've showed that in videos. I've proved it. Proven fact. But we won't go there again, will we? But uh, he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Hmm. And the uh, pagan philosophers didn't get it. They didn't understand about the resurrection. They didn't want to hear about that. Just like the post-tribbers. The pre-trib fib. Just deny Jesus. That's what you're doing. I actually saw some post-tribber the one time, and he said, he said the rapture is not Jesus. It's you know this whole rapture thing. It's not about Jesus. It's you know you, people, these pre-tribbers worship it like it's Jesus. Uh, well, the resurrection is the proper title there, and uh, yes, I do worship the resurrection because Jesus said, "I am the resurrection." Still not going to get it. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Huh. Power of Jesus from resurrection. Do you have Jesus in your life? I hope so. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Here's a lot of stuff. We're going to have to go through a lot of scriptures on this one. The importance of the resurrection. See, this is the key to this whole study. The rapture thing, I get it. You know, it's going to be a rapturous event, joyous event. I understand why people have called it that. I've called it that myself. But the whole thing is, the real term there is the resurrection. That is the big one that we're looking for as Christians. All right, that's the hope that we have, the resurrection of our bodies. Let's look at this. Uh, chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, 
by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. A lot of people believe in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, Je Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. I am the resurrection. Remember, remember that as we continue. Verse 5, And that, uh, that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that He was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that... We, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Paul did see Jesus, in other words. Verse 9, because a lot of the people out there, another, I just got to kick another little movement, they'll say Paul was a false apostle, he didn't have the signs of an apostle, he didn't see Jesus. Yes, he did. Um, verse 9, for I am the least of all, least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Post rivers. There is no resurrection of the dead if you believe in Matthew 24. Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. There's no resurrection of the dead in those passages. Hmm. Verse 13. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Hello, post-tribbers. You're of all men most miserable. You're not looking forward to the resurrection. Oh, oh yeah, yes, we are. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're looking forward to the Antichrist. Seeing the Antichrist, and then the whole thing gets going and whatever else, and you get to prove how purified and holy and whatever else you are. It's exactly what you believe. Verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Okay, there are different parts of the first resurrection. We'll see this later. I'm going to do another study on this specific subject. He's become the first fruits of them that slept. What's that talking about? Old Testament saints. Jesus Christ comes up first. For since by man, man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. After were they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Okay? There's... You could basically say three different parts. I'm not going to fight over this thing and whatever else, the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble and then the millennial, you know, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, people that go into that time and whatever else. But the point is, this resurrection that's spoken about here, there's multiple parts to it. I'm going to cover that in another study. Um, Uh, verse 25, For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. We'll see that here in a little bit. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Okay, the Lord is separate the body and the soul and the spirit there, they can separate. That's the thing that differentiates the Godhead from us. We can't separate ourselves at will. Okay, God can. And the point is, Jesus Christ has certain prophecies which need to be fulfilled by him. And then at the end, he goes and it's just one, the, the body, the soul, the spirit join. Okay, there are certain things. I've talked about that in other studies. Again, you can look into that. Um... You know, it says about, you know, he's on seated at the right of hand of God until, until means that it's, 
he's seated there at the right hand until something happens in the future. Um, verse 29, Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Very true. You want to go into the time of Jacob's trouble and there's no resurrection of the dead at the end of the thing? As far as what happens in Matthew 24, then what's the point? Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. If you go into the post-trib thing, those evil communications will corrupt your good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some men will, man will say, How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Okay, I'm reading a lot of verses here, but it's very important to get this stuff. And I can't go through every single verse here in this passage. But it's just talking about what you are right now. This man that you're seeing right here is corruptible. You are corruptible if you're saved. It's not going to be, I'm not going to look exactly like I am now. You're not going to look exactly like you look, you know, right now. Um, the body that the Lord gives us is a resurrection body. It's incorruptible. Um, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be that which... How be... Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, so, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Again, comparing your fleshly body that you have now as a born-again Christian and the spiritual body that you get in the future. Verse 49. Important to get this. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, corruptible flesh, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Yeah. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Again, it's not this body that's going to get to go to heaven and look different and, or be the, basically the same. No, it's going to be a different creature when I get there. Um, verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This isn't Matthew 24. It's not what's going on there. All right? Jesus Christ was talking about the resurrection of the dead. He was giving definite clues, and they were confused. They were saying, I don't get it. I don't understand. You read John chapter 10, you're going to see that. You know, declare unto us this parable. What's, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. They're not saying that with Matthew chapter 24. Hmm. Um, verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We will be resurrected. I don't have to worry about going into a time period, like the time of Jacob's trouble, where I could lose my salvation. I don't need to worry about that. I have been redeemed 
purchased. Okay? Very important there. I should say I've been, I've been saved. The Lord saved me. The redemption of the purchased possession is yet in the future. Say it that way. Ephesians chapter 1, if you want to look that up. Okay, next we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The other passage that's, that uh, a lot of people say is, a, uh, you know, preacher of rapture or whatever, but it's the resurrection. That's what's going on here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. It's talking When it says about asleep, by the way, it's not talking about their soul or whatever. It's, it's talking about the body. Okay, The body is what's sleeping there. Absent from the body, present with the Lord, the Bible talks about. Um, when you die as a Christian, your body is the thing that sleeps, waiting for, the, for that resurrection. All right? Your soul and your spirit go to be with the Lord. Okay? Um, <clears throat> verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, resurrection, even some, so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead go up first. This is the resurrection. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Talked about that this passage many times. Okay, um, And again, compare what's going on here to Matthew chapter 24. Sun and the moon darken, the stars falling from heaven, you know, and, and there's war and all this other stuff. So many things lead up to so many signs that you can look at with Matthew chapter 24 before the Lord comes back at the second coming. Okay, the Lord's not going to come back second coming and then it's the third coming. You know, that stuff is... is Stupid argumentation from the post-trib world. All right? The Lord's not going to come down and sit his feet on the ground when we get called up. All right? He's just up there in the clouds and he says, come up hither. It's the resurrection. All right? That's all it is. The second coming of Jesus Christ at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation 19, is when he comes down and actually gets on the ground there after the battle of Armageddon. Don't let the posties confuse you on that. Um, turn back to Philippians chapter 3. A lot of scripture to go through in these studies. It's important that you see what the scriptures teach. Not some emotional Baptist rant. Some you know, little jerk up there yelling and slamming his pulpit and whatever else. Like a little brat that's you know, not getting his toy. Philippians chapter 3. I won't mention names of course. Um, Philippians 3, verses 9 through 14. And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Hmm. Interesting. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I, I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Um, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those uh, things which are before. I press toward the mark for the pr prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, So what Paul is saying is he's not saying, I don't know if I'm going to be resurrected or not. I really don't know. The resurrection is there. Okay, but as a Christian, that's one of the big motivating factors for you. You're going to get called up one of these days. All right? It's a purifying hope. You do your best. So what if I die before the, the resurrection happens? Okay, you still do your best so that you can attain under the resurrection of the dead. So you can say, hey, I lived my life for Jesus Christ. I didn't just waste my time down here after he saved me. You see, that's what it's talking about there. But the resurrection is what a Christian looks forward to. See? You see the point here? If you're a post-trib or if you think that you're going into this time, you're not looking for the resurrection. And you can't show me any resurrection of dead saints in Matthew chapter 24. Show it to me. I've, I've offered that challenge for a long time to these post-tribbers. They never can do it. 
because they don't know what they're talking about. But let's go. We're going to finish up here. And we're going to go on to the next part where I'm going to talk about this first resurrection thing. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. It says here, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, what do you see there? Well, that would be a resurrection there. Okay, but look at this, verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, I'm going to get into all this detail stuff because this is another one of the big ones posties will go to. And they'll say, well, see, the first resurrection, we can't. there can be no pre-trib rapture because the first resurrection isn't even over until the end of the thousand year reign. So how could there be a pre-trib rapture? And I'm going to show you that that's one of the dumbest arguments that you can use. And a very quick way that you can prove that is just read verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Wait a second. If the first resurrection doesn't happen until the end of the thousand years, but it talks about them being resurrected and reigning with Christ for the thousand years. See, posties can't read plain English. They say, well, the first resurrection is not till the end of the thousand years. Okay, then how do they get resurrected and reign with Christ for the thousand years? But that's going to be it for this study. Um, the proper term is resurrection. Okay, and Jesus Christ is the resurrection. But uh, we're going to come back in the next study. And we're going to talk about what is this thing called the first resurrection. All right. That is going to be it. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.